Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's Up With That, the show that brings you interesting people, places, cultures, and subcultures here in the South Bay, the San Francisco Bay Area, the state of California, and beyond. And tonight, what's up with the Imperial Court of San Jose? What is the Imperial Court of San Jose? And how can someone get involved in this fun-loving, fun-spirited, and exciting group? Yeah, this just might be the one for you. Well, in 1965, Jose was crowned the first empress of the city of San Francisco. In 1970, the city of San Jose had its own empress. Well, as we all know, by the 1980s, the AIDS epidemic had devastated many people in America, and particularly the gay community. Well, what happened? Well, the drag kings, queens and kings, they kicked in. And the leather community, they got involved, and it all became a big party for a good reason, raising thousands of dollars to help fight AIDS and many other charities, as we will learn about tonight, as I welcome to the show Kevin Roach. He is the Absolute Emperor, and I'm going to come back to his real title in a minute, but he's the Absolute Emperor 34 for the Imperial Royal Lion Monarchy, Inc. of San Jose. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Loving your costume. Purple is it. So, yep. so tell me, how did the Imperial Court begin? Well, it started with a pageant in San Francisco in 1965. Jose Soria, who was a drag performer at the Black Cat, okay. sang opera and like sort of other things, <laughs> um, was one of the early members of the Taverns Guild, Taverns Guild in uh, San Francisco, won the pageant. Mm -hmm. and they were going to crown her queen of the ball, and she took the crown and said, oh, no, I've been a queen all my life. I hereby <laughs> crown myself empress of San Francisco. Okay. And uh, there was some consternation about this proclamation, and as you might imagine, but people mm -hmm. sorted it out. There were some rules originally. Jose was not allowed to wear women's clothing okay. when he was parading as the empress. He could wear a wig and a small crown, but he couldn't wear a dress on the street. Now, was that like a legal issue, or was that just a... This was a comfort issue, okay. for the most part. I mean, at that point, it could have been a legal issue. Mm -hmm. There were laws that would have allowed him to be arrested for being for... a transvestite in public. Mm -hmm. But Imagine most important, that, huh? it was <laughs> they were trying to not make people too uncomfortable with the idea. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it settled out into a set of traditions. Okay. And in 1970, um, a court was started here in San Jose. Mm -hmm. uh, and there have actually been three um, successive organizations that have mm -hmm. been the Imperial Court in San Jose. And the IRLM is the uh, current court here. Mm -hmm. We incorporated in 1989 as a nonprofit, a 501c3, okay. here in California. So you can donate. Exactly. Um, so, you know, you talk about San Francisco and San Jose, and we know, we know that San Francisco is 38-some miles away, and many people say a world away. Um, was it difficult here in San Jose to, to garner up support, and did you have any problems in setting this up? Um, no. I mean, there are 75 chapters of the imperial court system around okay. the world. So anywhere there were people who wanted to get together and look fabulous mm -hmm. and try and do some good while they were looking fabulous, um, it was an excuse to have a court. And, and have some fun. Exactly. I mm -hmm. mean, and there are now, it's, it's sort of a gentleman's agreement between all the different courts, so we do mm -hmm. a few things the same way. There are expectations, mm -hmm. but each group is actually its own corporation. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm thinking now you're talking about the court. So let's set this visually for the audience. Okay, the court, there's a king and a queen, and there's, and when I went to your webpage, there's the absolute this and the this, that, and this, 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 this <laughs> actually, was, I was kind of cracking up because it was, it was funny. I mean, as you can tell it had a sense of humor. So if, what exactly is the court then? Well, it starts with the monarch or monarchs who are elected in some way or another once a year. Mm -hmm. um, in San Jose, um, anyone who lives in Santa Clara County is entitled to vote in the election. Okay. So this started with empresses. Emperors were added later on. Um, there have been male and female emperors and empresses. Mm -hmm. As there should be. Um, That's fair. <laughs> so uh, you start with the monarchs, the emperor and or empress, and then they name the rest of their court. There's, so that's where it gets fun, then, huh? Yeah, well, it is a great deal of fun. Um, this is a camp organization. I mean, right. we do some serious work. We do like to dress up and look fabulous, but we also do an awful lot of just fun and silly things. Mm -hmm. So there are a few titles that you always have. 
you always have an imperial crown prince and an imperial crown princess because okay. they're the people who step up when a monarch can't be there. All right. If you're out of town, they can stand in for you, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And then there are assorted crown titles, and those eight or so crown titles are the core of your working group because your job is to raise money for charity. Mm -hmm. That's what you do, and so you, you get about a dozen people who you okay. trust to be there all year working right. hard with you. And then you may have... 10, 20, 30, 40 more people that you give titles in the course of the year, uh -huh. and those can be really fun. Yeah. Like some of the titles that you may have given would be... I had a whole series of uh, crown countesses, which we created because we had six um, people who were entirely new to the system who wanted to be able to wear tiaras, and our rule is mm -hmm. you have to have crown in your title to wear a tiara. <laughs> okay. So I got permission for the year to have this special title, and they were the rainbow crown countesses. Okay. But... I couldn't just do red, orange, yellow, no. Mm -hmm. We had uh, vermilion and saffron. Uh, no, purple was heliotrope. Yeah, uh, well, purple's a royal color for that. Yes. So, um, and, and the further down in the order they were, the less restrictions there are in the name that mm -hmm. you can do. So they, uh, they get very silly, you know. We had, we had a title for the person who picked up the mail. What, what was it called? I don't remember, but it was pretty uh, pretty insane. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a uh, master of the hunt and a keeper of his majesty's stables. Now, mm -hmm. I neither hunt nor own horses, right. but... Well, I was cracking up because it was very funny. It was... It was, it right. was and creative. It's got to be creative, you know. Right. It's got to have some kind of wit to it. That's what we do, you know. So, okay. So, the, an event. So, uh, if I was to come to an event, having never come to an event, what would I expect to see? Most of our events are shows. So okay. we put on entertainment. You will have drag performers. You may have singers. I am a singer myself. Mm -hmm. um, so you may have singers. You may have a little bit of dance. You may have who knows what. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is to have a good time and encourage people to chip in more money yeah, of course, as it goes yeah. along. All the people doing this are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets paid. And some of them, in fact, uh, the performers will often be tipped by the audience, and yeah. many of the performers donate their tips mm -hmm. right back into the charity pot. Well, I mean, it's amazing when you think about when a, a community bounds together for, you know, for the cause of well, HIV, a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, what, how creative you can get, you know? And really, what people don't understand, and I, I hope the viewers understand, is that every little bit that you can do for anything that you believe in, you know, is, is a good thing. I mean, being involved, being involved in the community, taking an interest in things, that's, that's good stuff, you know. And if you can have fun... And you, look fabulous while you're doing exactly, it. Exactly, because, you know, we've done certain... I've done community things where they're not exactly, you know, feet-kicking fun, you know. It's like, okay, whatever. But, you know, it, it, the more fun you make it, the more people you're going to have come in. And Well, to give you an idea, we took in about $23,000 during my year. That's great. Um, and, and that's $23,000 that wouldn't be there. So. Right. And about 70% of that went straight back out to charity. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have some overhead. We have a yeah. warehouse where we store props and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. We do have to pay for some bills. But uh, we have, do really well mm -hmm. at getting the money back out to the community. And our charter is to spend it in Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. Well, for people who are not familiar with you, I mean, you're an awesome customer. So you could fill up a, a warehouse <laughs> just with your wings, okay? Um, so, okay, so a person comes, let's say they want to get involved in the group then. They, they come, do they, is there like an application process or they just, do they show up? Do not, they... not in San Jose. What, what we encourage people to do is first come to a show or an event. We do other things that aren't shows. We do, mm -hmm. you know, barbecues. Um, I did a number of wine and cheese evenings mm -hmm. with the cooperation of a local restaurant. Mm -hmm. You're going to be having a lot of people showing up pretty soon. <laughs> well, good, good, because, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's one of the only groups that actually raises money specifically for charity rather mm -hmm. than doing other things and raising a little money. That right. is our, our charter is to mm -hmm. build community and raise money. Yeah, and build long-term friendships and, yeah. and so, really bind people together. But, but to join, um, come to an event or so so you mm -hmm. can meet some of the people because, you know, if, if they drive you nuts on the first time you meet them, then you're not mm -hmm. going to want to work with them for a year. Right. But it's and very we open. Some, you know, and you talk to any of the active court members who are there that evening mm -hmm. and say you're interested in joining, and they will probably jump at the chance because mm -hmm. the more people you have, the less any one person has to do, which right. is yeah. a lot of fun. And if the year is successful, you asked about absolute. Uh -huh. If your year is successful and the board of directors um, decides that you've met your goals, then you get to add the term absolute to your title 
after the mm -hmm. end of your year. So and that, I was... That's the eternal... Yeah, that's, your, that's your lifetime title unless you do something really horrible later mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. Well, you have done, I'm sure, the costumes for many wonderful shows. One of the shows that you had mentioned earlier to me was The Emperor's New Clothes. And we're going to look at the, give the audience an idea of exactly what we're talking about because some of them right now are probably, okay, well, this is kind of, you know, okay. Sleeping Beauty kind of thing going on, whatever. Right. <laughs> you know? so, so we'll so, give them a little taste of this show. And why don't you just set it up for me? Okay. For, for reference, the, the Empress is expected to look like an Empress, is expect, expected to look female at all official events. The Emperor is expected to look male. I was the Emperor. But we have a tradition that one night we do a show called Emperor New Clothes where everybody has to do turnabout. So all of the okay. male title holders have to do drag, and all of the drag title <laughs> holders get to come as boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, This must be a sight to see. <laughs> well, it gave me a chance to do um, a production number I'd always wanted to do, and I dabbled in drag 15 years ago and didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy trying to create a drag character. In this case, everyone was coming to see if Emperor Kevin would look okay in high heels. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to worry about a personality. I just had to worry about performance. Did so you had, look good in high heels? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I had a great deal of fun doing this show. All right. We're going to look at a clip from The Emperor's New Clothes. Enjoy it. We'll be right back with What's Up With That. Hello and welcome back. We're here with the Imperial Court of San Jose, Kevin Roach. But I'm going to give you his official title here from the card because I, I find it very interesting and, and, and quite amusing. And I think it just speaks for itself. We have the Three Ring Rainbow Court of Love, Lust and Laughter, the Sapphire and Steel Leather Emperor, His Imperial Majesty, Absolute Emperor 34 of the Imperial Royal Lion Monarchy, Inc. of San Jose, Kevin Roach. Hey, welcome back. Does somebody actually have to say that? <laughs> yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, so tell me, what are the Emperor's duties? Well, the monarch's Other than to rule the kingdom and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the monarch's duties, and this is the Emperor and the Empress both. Um, it's your job to organize the court the working court, which is the fundraising team, mm -hmm. the entertainment team, the working team that actually does the work of the nonprofit for a year, for 12 months. Okay. So you have a goal, a money goal you're trying to reach, and part of that money goal is that 60% of everything you raise immediately goes back out to charity. We disperse funds mm -hmm. uh, at least four times a year. Yeah. The other 40% pays for the warehouse right. and a few other, and the mailbox and a few other things, and then is banked towards the end of the year event, which is called Coronation, mm -hmm. which is a major, huge ball where people come from all over the country to see mm -hmm. you. But the rule is it has to be paid for in advance. So from that 40% of what mm -hmm. you raise, all the bills for Coronation are prepaid. Mm -hmm. And then everything that comes... Welcome to America. Yeah, uh. <laughs> but the, the wonderful part about that is it means that everything that comes through the door... That night. Is that all. night wow. goes straight to charity. And you can announce how much you've raised that evening for your... Uh, your charities, which That's is really, yeah. amazing. It's empowering thing. then. Yeah. So, okay, so they, and let's talk about the coronation now because I love coronations. So the, I, you do the whole full, the full big coat thing and don't you love my great, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so prolific tonight, okay? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the wardrobe is going to vary according to which court you're at. Remember, there mm -hmm. are 75 courts all doing their coronations. Mm -hmm. So if you're smart, you settle on a theme early in the year right. for your coronation and you announce it in advance because you encourage people to dress in theme. One reason we were the Three Ring Rainbow Court is we had a circus theme. Our, our, mm -hmm. We were Cirque de San Jose. That was the theme <laughs> for our coronation. So our opening number was... So you have people jumping around in lion suits and all this? That thing? was our opening number. <laughs> <laughs> Did the, I just uh, steal that from you? <laughs> uh, the Greatest Show in the Galaxy was the mm -hmm. uh, production number we did to open the show. And we gave um, we gave three costume prizes for for visitors who came. The in, well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you encourage that, or you come in your finest formals. Mm -hmm. um, it's a crowns and gowns night, which means mm -hmm. um, the all the rhinestones and the crowns come out. That's right. And you see them. You also see them get tucked away as soon as they're done walking across the stage. <laughs> <laughs> what is the strangest coronation you've been to? 
Strangest. Hmm. But I don't. I mean, strange is a is an. You know, I don't know if that's quite the right word. The most creatively different. A an imperial cruise down the Nile in search of the lost cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was that about? Um, well, the emperor and empress of that town had two different things in mind, and so they just mashed them together. And so you had a number of people who came in Egyptian-themed costumes, mm -hmm. and you had a number of people who came as Hanna-Barbera cartoons. The, uh, That's pers very interesting. The person who won the, uh, the men's costume prize that night was actually a past emperor of San Jose, my predecessor, mm -hmm. and he came as Charlie Brown. Great. Did and, you get overrun with Cleopatra that night? Uh, no. There was, uh, I don't even remember any Cleopatras. There was a Nefertiti. Okay. And I came as Ra from Stargate. Well, that's cool. I was, so. so, once somebody's, in, I mean, so we can kind of be realistic about this. Once somebody's involved in the court, what kind of duties might they expect? I mean, how much time is going to be involved? I mean, these are the things that people want to know. Right. It, it depends on where you're involved. If you have a crown title, mm -hmm. there, are, there are expectations. You're expected to help organize two of the events mm -hmm. during the year. If you're just, uh, if you have one of the, the lesser titles, a non-crown title, it's expected that you'll pitch in and help yeah. once or twice. Well, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah and we expect that everybody will be there. putting on a coronation there. here, okay? You better get working. Well, there's all sorts <laughs> of things that don't involve being on stage, too. Mm -hmm. You know, you need people to sell tickets. You need people to, you know, rustle the grub if you're doing a barbecue. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of ways people can help that don't involve. They're at the stage like, oh, Yeah, there are please. people who have stage fright who still mm -hmm. want to help the court. There mm -hmm. are ways to do that. There are people who don't want to get into drag. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways to do that. The, the court is open to everyone, men, women, gay, straight, doesn't matter. We're here mm -hmm. to have a good time, put on a good show. And raise some money. Raise some money and look fabulous. Of course, yeah. Never yeah. forget that part. <laughs> Yeah, we, you've been pushing that one. So, um, so I, okay, you have like some parts, some names on your thing, but you have like the absolute, Right. Fairy godmother or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So what's, what, what does all this mean? What? Okay. At the end of the year, each monarch gets to give away one lifetime title okay, to someone they feel who's helped them. And there are, cer there are certain things you can't give as mm -hmm. a lifetime title. Uh, the queen mother and queen father titles, mm -hmm. the board can give. That's okay. why there are less of those than anything else. Mm -hmm. But that's why the others are so crazy because you can make them up mm -hmm. on the fly. In my case, my Imperial Crown Prince and Princess mm -hmm. worked really, really hard. And so we mm -hmm. gave them Imperial Crown Prince and Imperial Crown Princess for life as their title. Okay. So that like now if they go anywhere, any court in the system, mm -hmm. they get to walk with that title. Because the rest of the titles vanish when, mm -hmm. the, when the year ends. So it's really kind of cool. It's sort of this medieval kind of thing going on. It's more Victorian. It's more Victorian, Oh, Victorian. Actually. Okay. Uh, Mama Jose really based it on Queen Victoria's court. Mm -hmm. um, she was pretty hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was the hardcore one. So with all of these different characters, okay, and I know how it is. Cause I've, I mean, I've seen people getting ready for shows and stuff. Do you have certain personas, certain personalities that, that evolve into something um, Bigger than it needs to be, you know what I'm saying? Do you um, have well, yes. I mean, you have strong personalities. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to say it as politely as possible. Well, you, you, whenever you have a group of strong personalities who like to perform, mm -hmm. you will occasionally get divas. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally? <laughs> clashing with you. Well, we had a really good year. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part, we didn't have that kind of thing. There were mm -hmm. a few, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, everybody would stop and take a deep breath and remember, yes, yeah. okay, we're supposed to be having fun, we're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. this for community. And usually mm -hmm. that's enough to make you stop. And mm -hmm. a couple times, you know, we had to basically separate people and then talk them down later on. So what is the state of, I mean, this is a little bit off course, but what is the state of drag in San Jose right now? There are a lot of performers. Mm -hmm. But what we found over the last few years is they don't think of the court oh, right really? now. Um, I'm hoping that that's starting to change. We had a lot of new people my year. Mm -hmm. Last year had a number of difficulties and um, was very small. This year, I think that Emmanuel and Angel, mm -hmm. who are our uh, emperor and our regent empress, mm -hmm. really have a handle on what to do to bring a lot of the younger performers back mm -hmm. into the court system to have some fun. And again, the more people you have involved, right. the more fun you can have. Well, I always think that the, the, the names they choose 
are awesome. We'll talk a little bit about that. We're also going to look right now at some other footage of some other events, and you've been doing a lot of them. Very colorful. Enjoy it, viewers. We're going to take some more look at the Imperial Court of San Jose, and we'll be right back, so stick to your tube there. Hi, we're back here with Kevin Roach talking about the Imperial Court of San Jose. And one thing I'm kind of interested in, I, I keep going back to this pageant thing because, uh, first of all, I teach acting at a college and do a lot of productions. But, you know, as an actor, you stick true to your art and you want to be real. And Stanislavski says you have to feel it and the whole thing. And this sort of seems to be a kind of a combination of costume and I'm sure that's a big thing I mean when someone walks through the door is it like you know that... it is sometimes yes mm -hmm. there, there is a grand tradition of high camp mm -hmm. a grand tradition of big productions and especially mm -hmm. to coronation mm -hmm. or if you are invited to do a command performance mm -hmm. you tend to pull out all does anybody stops. ever walk in and people go Ugh. oh yeah <laughs> Let us not think that a room full of drag queens <laughs> who are drinking are kind. <laughs> I can't even They're remember. friendly, but they're not necessarily kind. I think after a few drinks, even friendly can be scratched out of it. Um, so the infamous cat fight there. Yeah, no, there's uh, certainly for people doing drag, there are as many reasons for um, someone to do drag as there are people. Mm -hmm. and, and I uh, love the drag names. Some of the names that they come up with are just classic. I mean, yeah. I you mean, know? well, you remember mine. Mm -hmm. I was Deborah Taunt. When yeah. I, did drag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're classic. They're just, they're perfect names. So here we have the coronation or we have an event and we're talking about the costumes that certainly play a big role. But there's also, we're, you're in a fantasy state at that point, to a, to a point. Right. What's going on? I mean, and how, how far do you play out this fantasy? Well, the first thing we always remember is that, you know, the motto for my court is remember that the title in two bucks still won't buy you a, a good cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because the title, well, all, the title all by itself is meaningless. All the title does is open doors. Mm -hmm. You know, it opens the door at a club so you can do a show there, mm -hmm. or it might open the door with an elected official you want to bend the ear of. But that's mm -hmm. all it does. It's mm -hmm. just a starting point. And um, except for certain levels of hierarchy in actually organizing how things run, you know, that's what the crown titles are yeah. for. They're like your lieutenants. Um, there isn't really any rank, mm -hmm. you know, and people who take it too seriously and believe that they really have that rank are the ones who have problems. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're doing a no, show, you're not Henry the Eighth. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not actually the emperor of anything. <laughs> yeah, I really, you did not just succeed California as part of your massive right. holdings here. But in a show, of course, you're. It depends what kind of performance you're doing. As I said, mm -hmm. I'm a singer. So for the most part, I'm getting up there and I'm going to sing my heart out. Mm -hmm. On occasion, we've done production numbers. And mm -hmm. uh, we did a pirate production number for the Ducal Ball where we used music from Muppet Treasure Island. And well, that's funny. Yes, but only three of us could rehearse. So <laughs> okay. the others had to run around and follow those of us who knew what was supposed to happen <laughs> while we were on stage. <laughs> okay. Which with the Muppets works all right. Yeah. That's probably uh, the only way you'd, way you'd get away with that yeah. one. But the other thing, you just have to be prepared for things to go wrong. The mm -hmm. sound won't work. Yeah. Uh, that's the most common problem. The is, you know, usually it's there's too much makeup on the back of the CD and it just won't play. <laughs> 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 so you, you apologize, that's you clean funny, it off. That's funny, actually. <laughs> you apologize, <laughs> you clean it off, and you restart the, yeah. the CD. <laughs> it's bad when you would start recognizing the shades, right? Exactly. I know who that is. Okay, another group that, uh, part of the community that plays into this is the leather community. What is their interest in, in the imperial court? Or well, that's going to vary from year to year because the court itself, of course, is always is based on a series of personal relationships. Mm -hmm. So if you have people, if you have monarchs who are comfortable with and friendly with the local leather community, I'm a member of the local leather mm -hmm. community, so I had involvement. I had a number of court members who mm -hmm. were in the local community, and I know many people around here. So we often got some of them to show up. 
Many of them don't like drag shows. But mm -hmm. there were other events we did, like the Wine and Cheese for Charity mm -hmm. or a barbecue or something like that, where they would show up. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of tailoring the events so that you can appeal to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But they were right there pitching in. Yeah. Um, don they donated gifts for, you know, mm -hmm. for prizes and stuff. They were there working right alongside with us. Mm -hmm. And that will vary from year to year depending on the, the monarchs, of course, and their relationship with the leather community. But in San Jose, at least, there is no tradition of enmity between the drag community and the leather yeah. community. Yeah. Have you ever had an event that just flopped? Yes. <laughs> Of course. I yes. Mean, what happened? Let's hear it. Well, uh, we did We did one event at a small local bar where no one showed up. Well, that would be a problem. Absolutely yeah. <laughs> no one showed up. I came in, and I have a portable sound system I bring for bars that aren't equipped for shows. Mm -hmm. So I set everything up, started the music playing, and we waited. <laughs> and we waited. And we waited. And none of the promised entertainers arrived, oh, and no. only about six audience members arrived. Okay. Um, <laughs> and what do you do? Huh? Um, I asked them which it, I, I'd performed there before. The, the ones who were there were regulars and knew me. I said, let mm -hmm. me sing you a couple songs. Let's not just waste the evening. And they said, what do you want to hear? Mm -hmm. They told me which of my songs they wanted to hear, and I threw in the disc and sang them a few songs. So on the flip side, what was the event that you remember the most? Emperor's New Clothes is one of our most spectacular events. It really was, uh, partly because no one in my court really had any idea how I would look and drag. They didn't mm -hmm. really understand I had done it before and given and it up. Did someone go down the aisle naked too, or what, I mean, well, the emperor had like or under no, or no. Our emperor's new clothes is very specifically a turnabout evening. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> not based on the children's fable. No. Let's not get that one confused. No, no. This this was not a most nude contest. This was <laughs> a uh, you know, can you do the other role? For yeah. So evening. Aesop wasn't having a, a heart attack. And uh, the the best moment <laughs> of the evening was when one of my countesses. You remember I mm -hmm. mentioned the crown countesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of our best performers, in fact, came looking dashing as a young gentleman mm -hmm. and was standing at the bar behind me while I was ordering a drink. And you didn't recognize him? He didn't recognize me. And I finally turned around and said, hello, Tommy, and he <laughs> fell over. <laughs> okay. he, he couldn't look at me for 15 minutes because he just did not believe it was actually me. Well, that's great. I mean, <laughs> um, so... Charities that you support, okay? I mean, this is a big thing again. You have to understand right. you're, you're, you're raising money. What charities do you support? We have, uh, if you visit our website, mm -hmm. which is irlm.org, mm -hmm. um, there is a listing of many of the charities we've contributed to. It's way, far too long to mm -hmm. go through here. Yeah, really? Yeah, Can I have all 5,000 of them, please? Yes, <laughs> but recently um, we have dedicated a lot of time and energy and money to the Billy DeFrank okay. Center, okay. which is one of our favorite charities. We always donate something to one or another age charities mm -hmm. here in Santa Clara County. Okay. We uh, have given money to Next Door Solutions, which mm -hmm. is uh, yeah. for dealing with domestic violence. We've done a, gotten permission from the board to do a couple of special events, special fundraisers for outside of the area, okay. like Katri for Katrina okay. and for Tsunami, children affected by the tsunami. All right. Well, you know what? I have to wrap it there. Okay. Um, thank you very much um, on our... Uh, credits, there'll be a place that they can contact you. Please, if you're interested in helping the community, I mean, do what you can. Any help that you help with whatever whatever it is, uh, it's always needed. You know, we live a, in a world where uh, people are not always that tolerant. The only way we're going to come to a conclusion and learn to be friends is if we go out in the community and make ourselves the little worker ants that we should be. Thank you very much. Good That's luck. Pleasure. And check out his costumes. Sometimes you have a chance to Go to Costume Con, which is coming up. Just look for that. I'll remind you of it when it comes, because we'll be there. And to our viewing audience, as always, if you're walking down the street and you see something interesting and you wonder to yourself, hey, what's up with that? Well, you tune into our show, What's Up With That? And maybe, in fact, I can probably guarantee you'll find exactly what you're looking for. We'll see you next week on What's Up With That. Good night, everybody.